So we have multiplying fractions here. And what's happening whenever we multiply fractions is you're just multiplying straight across, just like that. Okay? But instead of multiplying, if you multiply 3 with 4 and 8 with 6, you're going to get a very, very large number. So what we use is what we did with equivalent fractions. We're allowed to divide a fraction, numerator and denominator, by the same number. And if you noticed, after multiplying this, we created a fraction. So on the top we have right now is 12 and 48. But we don't want those large numbers. So what you can do is look at the numbers and say, okay, what do we have? Well, 3 and 6, they both share 3. So we divide the top one by 3. And what's 3 divided by 3? That's 1. 6 divided by 3 and that's 2. And then we look at the 4 and the 8 as well and they both share a 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1 8 divided by 4 is 2 and that's what we're doing. We're dividing the top and the bottom by the same number and then what we get is our actual product. So what is 1 times 1? That's 1. 2 times 2? That's 4. So this is why we do number 1, reduce first then multiply straight across. And now you could do an any, any top with any bottom. So we could have also taken a 2 from the 4 and a 2 from the 6. It won't make a difference how you do this. So let, let me show you one more time. Same thing, different reduction. So we have 3 times 4, 8 times 6. Now we'll start with the 4. So they have a 2, the 4 and the 6. Let me do that in green. So we take this one and go 4 divided by 2, that's 2. 6 divided by 2, that's 3. And now we can come over here and go, oh, well, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. We must do one numerator, one denominator, because you must divide the top and the bottom. And then now look, the 2 and the 8, they also have a 2. So 8 divided by 2 is 4, 2 divided by 2 is 1. And if you notice, we get 1 times 1 is 1, 4 times 1 is 4. It doesn't make a difference. You just have to make sure you get all of them. You must divide by everything. Okay, so let's look at three different ones. We're going to do uh, one together. So what if we have this fraction? Three-fifths times two over one. That's what you have to do. If you're multiplying by a whole number, you want to make it into a fraction. And then you look at it again. We have three times two over five times one. That's our actual fraction now. So now, is there any common factor, top or bottom? And the answer is no. So you multiply straight across, and that gives us 6 over 5, and that is our answer. You can also change it to a mixed number if you'd like. All right, so I want you to try this one. So remember, multiply it, write it as a fraction, and then reduce top and bottom. So hit pause and give it a shot. Okay, and this is what you should have gotten. So remember, this is a positive and negative. So positive times a negative is negative. And like the rules we, we learned with fractions, you can put that negative anywhere you want. So we just shove it out in front. And then now we can reduce. 32 and 12, they share a common 4. So after dividing, we get 8 and 3. 15 and, 15 and 5, they both share a common 5. So after dividing, we get a 3. And then multiplying it, 8 times 1 is 8. 3 times 3 is 9. All right, so hopefully now you kind of get a, a little bit better picture of it. So let's look at the next one. Here's what we have here. We have 3 times x. And then if you do 8 and 6, we're going to put those together using the commutative property times x cubed. That's all we did. So we put 3 and x, and then we put 6, 8, and x cubed together. In fact, we don't even have to do that. You can do any order you want, but I just like putting the numbers together. Okay, so now... 3 and 6, they both share a 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. I hope you're saying it too as you do it because you don't really want to make a mistake. A lot of times when we see they have a 3 in common, you'll write 3. But you want to say 6 divided by 3 is 2. Okay, well these have nothing left in common. So now we can rewrite it. And what we have is 1 times x is x over... Oops... sixteen x cubed alright and I like to leave the one up there because we have x's and so now we use the same rule we used before to get rid of the x's you want to rewrite it come up here and reduce 
and then put it all back together and that gives us our answer 1 over 16 x squared everything else on the bottom has to stay so that's what we get all right so that's fractions with multiplying all right now what if you have a mixed number a mixed number in a fraction well you can't multiply this because we get into a little bit of distributing and everything else that 3 to the 1 7 means here I'll write it over here 3 to the 1 7 is just like before it's 3 plus 1 7 so we'd have to distribute and it gets very confusing so what you want to do is take all of your mixed numbers and convert them to improper first so if we have 3 and 1 7 we want to turn it into 22 7 just like we did here and then bring down the 14 thirds and now we have our nice clean fractions that we can look at and go okay well 3 and 22 they don't have any common factors but 7 and 14 do so 7 divided by 7 is 1 14 divided by 7 is 2 and that's our answer we now can we can now multiply so it's 44 over 3 and now if we want to make it back into a mixed number that would be 11 Oops, not 11. Let's do our division 3 into 40. That's. Just do it, huh? 3, it's 1, 14, it's 4, it's 12, it gives us 2. So we get 14 and 2 thirds. And then double check it. That's 3 with 12, it's 42 plus 2. So it's 42. 44 thirds. Okay. Alright, so I want you to try these two. Remember, take your mixed number, change it to an improper, and then multiply them after you reduce. Alright, so give them a shot. Hit pause. Alright, and these are the answers you should have gotten. Alright, thank you.